We got something burning. What is burning? Oh, that ain't good. That is not good. Okay, do we need to go? Oh. We'll get to the part where I almost burned down the building later, but first, in this video, we've got a ton of cool things to cover. We've totally revamped the front door and the entryway. I've built not one, but two custom staircases. We built a fence to fully enclose the roof yard. And as a bonus, I've even got a surprise for you guys in the garage. Let's flash back to a couple months ago when we started the entryway renovation. We're in the entryway hallway right now. It looks terrible. The first thing that greets guests when they show up to the building is this ugly hideous mess here pretty much unchanged from when i bought the building in its abandoned state almost four years ago there were these hideous tiles that were just ugly cracked disgusting the front door was something else the steel was rusted through at points all the glass was cracked and the ornate design of the door itself well once you see it you just can't unsee it looks like yeah. yes it does if you can take me seriously for a second while i'm holding this the plan for the entryway is a totally new steel and glass door and facade, a green feature wall with a custom made from scratch LED neon sign, redoing all the floorway, the stairs, everything. And we'll start with some low hanging fruit. We're gonna paint the feature wall black so that the greenery we put on there later will pop. Now, my original plan was to use some of the grass that was left over from the roof yard for the green feature wall, but I thought I had more grass left over from my roof than I did. Yeah, we don't have enough to do the full wall. I guess, uh, I don't know. I think we're just gonna have to order something else. I'll probably get something a little different than grass for it. We're gonna have to pause this for a few days, make an Amazon order, and be right back to do the green wall. So while waiting for the new greenery to arrive, I got to work making the neon sign. And I'm gonna be doing it all from scratch, 3D printing the Medustrial HQ lettering and adding addressable LEDs inside that'll allow us to do lots of cool neon-like patterns with it. All right, we got the HQ part of the Medustrial HQ sign done, and the two halves seem like they are uh, fitting together pretty well. We got a nice tight fit for the embedded standoffs, and those will just screw into the back and be flush with the inside piece. That way we can just put our pieces of LED strips inside of here, pop these on, and it'll look pretty good sitting by the wall. Now we gotta print out the Medustrial letters for the sign, and that's gonna be a little bit trickier because the Medustrial is too big to fit on my 3D printer. We're gonna have to print the Medustrial in three parts and then put it back together. I'll show you how we do that after we print. The idea here is that we are going to slice it at different spots for the front and the back so that the front sections will bridge the gaps in the back section and that sort of interlocking will help hold it all together rather than just having three separate pieces that are just glued together. And I just carefully used some super glue to glue the back pieces together. And once the glue dried, I could install the male half of the standoff hardware we're gonna be using to attach the neon sign to the wall. With the standoffs in, I cut all the little segments of LED strip, which I'll be super gluing to the 3D printed letters, and then got to soldering all the little segments together. And while this happens fast on film, it was roughly a full day of soldering. Definitely a bit tedious, but I think the end result is gonna be worth it. All right guys, it's an exciting day because we've got the greens in, we've got some boxwood, we're gonna hang that on the wall, get the LED installed and see this all pop. I'm super excited to see how it comes out. 
and the faux boxwood is super easy to install. It's got a plastic grid backer that is easy to cut to size and staple right to the wall. It also has a tab and post system on the plastic backer that allows you to attach the pieces together. We're about halfway through installing the green wall here and we're gonna pause the installation of the greenery to install the neon sign. Now we got the standoffs embedded in here and I left about half the greenery down here loose so that we could run the wires from the LED sign behind the greenery and hide them that way. And one quick note to flash back to here. I learned my lesson from the green feature wall up on Texas Doghouse and pre-installed the standoffs in the wall before I hung the greens. I also had to modify the standoffs because the male half wasn't designed to be inset like I got it here. No big deal though, I just used a Dremel to cut a notch so that I could screw it into the female half in the wall. I also realized a little flaw in my plan for the install because the LED strips were actually blocking the standoffs so I couldn't screw them in, but it wasn't a huge deal to peel off the double-sided tape and then just reattach them with hot glue. I also added hot glue over the solder joints to protect and reinforce them. Once the back half of the sign was attached to the standoffs, I could snap on the front pieces, light it up to test it out. Once I verified the sign was working properly, I could run the wires through the hole in the wall that was conveniently already there for the gas meter at my place and install the concrete rock floating shelf that I made a couple videos ago. Now, if you guys haven't seen the video for that shelf, it is the lowest viewed video I've had in about four years. I honestly really love how this came out. So if you're sitting at home bored over the holidays and want something to watch, I highly recommend that. I think it's a pretty cool one. I'm super stoked on this feature wall. I think it's gonna make a really cool first impression. Definitely better than it was before. Looking back to that old drywall with a big hole in it and that hideous purple paint, this is a pretty good before and after shot. Next up, we got the front door and facade. It is time to say goodbye to that cracked glass and the eggplant. And since I've got a neighbor a few doors down with a metal fabrication shop, I decided to hire out the fabrication of the steel and glass doors as well as the fabrication of the fence to fully enclose the roof deck. So without further ado, let's cue that footage. All right, so we're uh, heading down the street. We've got Jeremy down there with the uh, welding shop. He's working on making the fence in the front door. We're gonna go check on the progress. All right guys, I was just out running errands and while I was out, the guys got here to start installing the fence on the roof. I am super excited to see this go in, so let's go check it out. So they just finished installing everything up here and it feels super solid. Text is not gonna get out. So the roof is now fully enclosed. In addition to the big segment where I've actually already set up a projector screen for outdoor movie night, they also added a little railing over here where there's a well to allow light into the building next door. And this was kind of ingenious. They just used these little bolts to go against the brick because this is actually my neighbor's building. That way I didn't have to drill into my neighbor's yard. They've just got these bolts here and here. And these just press against the brick and are plenty to hold this in place. It's not going anywhere. Very clever how they did that. We also added a gate right here, to close off the steps that lead up to the back half of the roof. And currently that's just storing a bunch of crap. So don't look too closely. And then lastly, there's another small segment of fence here. So everything is fully enclosed. So I'm super happy that the roof yard and Texas doghouse over there are now fully enclosed. I can just let him up here to do his business. Keep on working, keep editing videos for all you guys. Before going further, a quick message from this video's amazing sponsor, AG1. AG1 is a science-driven formulation of vitamins, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients that supports your brain, gut, and immune system. There's so much in just one scoop of AG1. Vitamins, minerals, probiotics, stress adaptogens, superfoods, mushrooms, and more. It's a one-stop shop combining what you normally get from multiple supplements into one simple drink that raises your baseline health, boosts energy and focus, improves gut health, and more. I've been drinking AG1 for about a month now, and I just feel better. Every morning, I mix one scoop of AG1 with 8 to 10 ounces of water, shake it, and drink it. So simple. And I know what you're thinking. 
It looks like it's good for me, but how does it taste? AG1 is flavored with vanilla beans and natural essence from pineapple. When I first tasted it, I was pleasantly surprised. It actually tastes good, and I look forward to having a glass of AG1 every morning. Now, I've been burned by other supplements in the past. They have ingredients that are scientifically shown to be good for you when you consume them in your food, but when you put those ingredients into a pill form, your body doesn't absorb it, and essentially they end up being snake oil. But not AG1. It uses science driven ingredients that are sourced specifically for their absorption and nutrient density so you actually get the benefits that you're supposed to get from it. It's a difference I can feel on a daily basis. And this is kind of non-scientific. It makes me feel better that I have to refrigerate AG1. To me, it's a good thing that the ingredients could actually go bad if you don't refrigerate it. And right now, AG1 has a great deal for my viewers. Just follow the link in the video description or head to drinkag1.com slash industrial and you'll get a free one-year supply of their D3 plus K2 liquid supplement and five free travel packs of AG1 with your first purchase of AG1. And of course, when you follow that link in the video description below, you're not only raising your baseline health, but supporting this channel and the content you enjoy here. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring this video, and now let's get back to it. Next up, let's head downstairs for the door and facade. And this installation had a few hiccups. There was definitely some fire involved, but first, everyone's favorite part, the demolition. So it looks like the door is fully out behind me. So we're gonna get the new one going in soon. Pretty excited to see what it's gonna look like, because that has been an eyesore. Just leave it like this, huh? Looks good. Wide open, just walk right in. Anyone and everyone, come into my life. After a quick lunch, the guys got to work installing the new door and windows, and after a little bit of work, we had a major scare. Uh, we got something burning. What is burning? Oh, uh, that ain't good. We got a fire extinguisher too if we need, but those things are a huge mess. All right. Make sure it's not like, because the main thing is the fire goes up. Ooh. Well, that was a very close call. Great stuff foam was under there and we didn't realize it. It's just uh, the old building. It was just hidden in there and the steel girder that's over the door and definitely caught fire when they were welding and that's right underneath the wood floor upstairs. So. We managed to put it out in time and it didn't spread up, so thank goodness. Woo! Starting to get dark. I'm working on another project, but we're gonna check out here what's going on. All right, looking good. Hopefully we're gonna finish tonight. Be good to have a door. Had a little hiccup. They were literally screwing the last screw into this protective steel grate and impact driver slipped. Totally exploded everywhere. So now we gotta get new glass. I think it's gonna come today though. So we'll get that fixed. And the door I think will be pretty much done. And then we can move on to flooring and the stairs. And that's gonna be another video if those videos are not already. Well, this, this, is a pretty dramatic change from the old eggplant door. What do you guys think? I personally am very happy. It's simple, it's clean, it's industrial. So the other major parts of the whole entry into the building are the new floor and the stairs that are behind me over there. We're not gonna go into full detail on the floor and the stairs because we have a separate video for the vinyl plank flooring install and a separate video for the stair build out with motion activated lighting which follows you as you move up the stairs. So here's a shameless reminder that if you wanna see those videos, subscribe bell and turn on those notifications. We're gonna turn our attention now to the stairs that are leading from the living room area up into the hallway. Somehow during all the renovation, things were not done properly. I think they just threw in some two by 12s as treads to make things worse. You can't really rip those two by 12s out without ripping out the drywall that was then installed 
over them. So I think I have a good solution. And I'm just gonna reuse some products I have around here. I'm gonna make risers out of half inch plywood and they're gonna paint those so they'll look pretty nice. And then I'm gonna use some of the leftover three quarter inch maple flooring we use in the rest of the place to create the stair treads. And I think that's gonna look pretty sharp. First up, I use my Rockler stair tread jig to measure all the risers and get a perfect fit. Then I headed down to the workshop to cut all the risers out. And I'm not gonna go into too much detail here because I have a separate video coming out for the main staircase build out and I'll go into detail there. In fact, it might already be out depending on when you're watching this video. Back to what we're doing here. I primed all the risers. I just find it easier to do whatever painting I can before installation. Then I took the risers up to install them using PL Premium construction adhesive and finish nails. With the risers done, I turned my attention to the landing tread, which is going to border the top of the staircase. This would have been easier to do back when I installed the flooring in the hallway, but I put it off, so now I have the scary task of cutting out the existing floorboards to make room for the landing treads. Then I headed down to the workshop to make the landing treads from leftover flooring. To do this, I first cut the tongue and groove edges off the floorboards. Then on the edge that will meet the existing flooring, I used a plane to add a slight chamfer to match the chamfer on the factory edges of the flooring. I then added a roundover on the front edge of the boards that will match the roundover on the stair treads I'm making. So now this looks like a nice finished edge. So this is gonna be what's exposed at the front of the step. Sort of like a modern take on a bullnose. I then cut the miter corners on the miter saw and took the landing treads upstairs to verify they fit properly. And this is where it got a bit tricky because while the landing treads fit the border perfectly, they weren't sitting level with the existing floorboards. To solve this, I took the treads down to the workshop and busted out my domino joiner. I used the joiner to add a few dominoes to each of the landing strips and to make the matching slots for the loose domino tenons in the existing floorboards. The miters made it a little tricky to get the boards in, but at the end of the day, I got them in and they were dead level with the existing floorboards. Next up is the trim. And as you guys know, I'm a trim minimalist. So I cut down some casing to an inch and a half and ran that around the underside of the stair landing. Nice and simple. With the trim done, I could finally turn my attention to making the stair treads. Each 12 inch tread is gonna be made from three of the five inch wide maple floorboards that I use throughout the rest of the living space. I started by trimming down one of the floorboards and giving it a subtle modern bull nose the same way I did on the edges of the stair landing. Then for each step, I put the three boards together and used my Rockler stair tread jig to cut them perfectly to fit. We got all the flooring stair treads cut to size using the Rockler stair tread jig. Now time to get them installed and I'm just having a little bit of nostalgia here. It is about oh, 9.30 at night. I'm here by myself again, working late in the building. Kind of feels full circle from three years ago when I was in here by myself just starting this building. Except that now we got Mr. Tex here who's supervising, right buddy? Yeah. So we're done with the stairs. We got Tex and his, uh, his friend Greg are hanging out right now. But at any rate, super happy how these stairs came out. It was, it was one of those things, I've just been putting it off forever, not wanting to deal with it. I'm sure you guys probably have a lot of projects in your home, so you get that feeling. Now we got one more surprise for you guys down in the garage. You know we're not really counting the garage and workshop as part of the renovation because it was way easier to do the permitting when we kept it to just the residential space. But anyway, Let's head down, I'll show you guys what we got down there. So we're taking a break from the upstairs to move to the garage. I had one person comment that they'll know the renovation is really done when I finally fix the garage ceiling. And well, we're not doing that quite yet, but we do have one big problem about to be solved. All the bugs and the mice that I've been experiencing. Yeah, that's right. I haven't really been posting about it, but we've been catching a bunch of mice and the bug zapper is working overtime. So we're getting a motorized screen put in the garage entrance so we can work with the garage open and not have all of nature coming inside. And I gotta give it a shout out to the fans of this channel because this screen is actually being provided by some fans of the channel who happen to own the company makes this. 
universal screens, and a local dollar BHS Retractables who services Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin. They've been following the building renovation. They reached out and asked if I needed a screen and I said, yes, I absolutely do. So this is super fun to work with companies that are not only awesome, but also fans of the channel. We got Joe, the VP of sales from Universal Screens right over there. We got Rodney Brandon, founder of BHS Retractables right over there. So everyone say thank you to them because it's pretty cool that we're getting this installed today. <laughs> wow, look at that. So it's a couple weeks later and on the rare warm November day in Chicago, we are absolutely loving having this screen here. Happy to report that the bug and mice problem seems to be solved as well. So I think it did its job. I gotta come clean with you guys. I might have been guilty of some unintentional clickbait. So that was a year ago, but now I am happy to report we are actually done. Really, for real, are actually done from the time you walk in the door all the way to the bedrooms in the back. Over the last few months, I've had my head down finishing all those little things that I've been putting off. I've got a ton of footage. I'm editing like crazy. Within about a week, we're gonna have videos for the floor and install and a video on the staircase renovation with the motion activated animated lights going up the stairs. They're super cool and they are the final two videos for the building renovation because we're done. After that, I gotta decorate and organize a bit and it'll be time for the building tour. So make sure you guys sub and bell for that. That's it for this time and I'll see you guys next time.